million dollar plan to kind of do the same thing you're talking about, connecting companies with community colleges to train workers. Do you see spending money as the way to do that? State money, federal money? Are you guys close on that, or is, is there a difference? Is, can the state do Look, it in I a mean, better the, way? The, the biggest thing that the federal government can do is get rid of all the, the, the strings and all the rules and the regulations. For example, I'm creating a, the Governor's Workforce Advisory Board. It's going to have lots of control. I have to put 26 people on there because that's what the federal government says I have to do. I don't want 26 people on a committee. That's how we ended up getting a camel. It was, you know, it was, a, it was an animal designed by a committee. You know? I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that all these programs are broken up. They're in little boxes. And more money is not the answer right now. It's flexibility, and it's an assessment of what we have. I've got, we've, got, um, we've got 77 different programs and 13 different entities, and frankly, right now in Ohio, we don't really know which, what's working. So why would you throw more money at something that you don't know is working? So I don't think right now we need more money. We are going to put some money into... Uh, in for companies being able to have incumbent workers because the federal government wants us to spend most of our money on people who are unemployed. Well, why wouldn't you want to upgrade people's skills who are employed so they don't become unemployed? So give us the flexibility, and I have argued for that. And, um, you know, uh, in fact, I talked to Bob, Joe Biden called me the other day, and we talked about some flexibility on Medicaid. But I don't think we need, uh, we don't need a lot more money right now. Just give us... Let us design a program that works for Ohio rather than trying to design it from Washington. And if we need more money, we'll tell you. But right now, I don't see that as the problem. Governor, okay. about job skills, um, right now Ohio schools are not mandated to teach cursive writing to the point that some of the kids uh, think cursive writing looks like foreign language to them. They can't read it. Is that a problem? Oh, I, I, I'm not going to comment on cursive or non-cursive. I'm, I'm agnostic on that issue. I let the school people decide it. But here's the thing. What you should keep your eye on is Stan Hefner has done a number of things so far. Number one, he has ranked schools as to how they're doing. Secondly, we are, he is going to be coming out with a different evaluation system uh, that we think will, I'm hopeful, is going to be more accurately telling parents how our children are doing. We're going to be getting a waiver, requesting a waiver from No Child Left Behind, but we're going to be raising our standards because our standards are low and yet our schools can't qualify to pass No Child Left Behind. So we will give the schools more opportunity to ultimately get themselves in a position of where they can pass, but we're going to raise standards in the state because our standards are not high enough. These are all, there are so many things happening with K through 12 and uh, Stan Hefner is, at, right at this point, providing really strong leadership so we can make appropriate assessments. Look, when 41% of our, of our high school graduates are in remedial 11th and 12th grade programs when they go to college, and 67% of Ohioans think the schools are great, there's a mismatch. I mean, 41%. Look at the dropout rate. I mean, the graduation rate in our urban districts is about 65% somewhere in that category. So you got over 30% of our kids that are not finishing the 12th grade. What happens to them? In our suburban districts, the dropout rate or the graduation rate's about, I think, about 80%. I mean, that's stunningly low when you think about these suburban districts and kids are not graduating. We need to fix K through 12, uh, and we're going to spend this year talking about it. And whether it's cursive or non-cursive, that's not the issue. The real issue is, are employers satisfied with what they're getting from our, our students? And secondly, are our community colleges and universities happy with the product that's graduating from K through 12? And if you go and talk to university presidents, they will tell you there needs to be great improvement. Okay. When do you think we'll see a Last capital guess. budget? Capital budget will be coming soon. It's coming soon. It'll be, in, I think, in March. It's coming. It's all coming. Lots of different things will be coming. We'll have an MBR. We'll be announcing all that, and we'll go from there. Governor, can Governor tax revenues are coming in ahead of uh, estimates so far. Do you anticipate that continuing, or you have to make spending adjustments in the MBR? Oh no, no. We we intend. You know, we intend to continue to save money. We, we're going to be spending money. That's not the purpose of that. That purpose of that is to. Look, we're going to unveil this MBR very soon. But uh, if we can get more revenues, that's a really good thing. 
and um, we don't intend to spend it because this economy is still roller coaster. And you know, you start reading, you start reading these economic reports. You know, we live in some concern with Europe and and their ability to settle things down. What's that going to mean for our companies? We don't have. It's good that we've gone from 89 cents in our rainy day fund to you know 240 million, and hopefully, we can grow it even higher. Uh, but we're not we're not going to be in a position of of spending spending money. I mean, there'll be a couple things uh, that will be targeted. You know, for example, the children's hospital money that I promised that will that will happen. But we're not going to be in the business of spending spending money. That would make no sense at all. We'll have a big. We'll have announcements on all these uh, plans coming very soon. It's that, very extensive. Do you think that okay. trend continues in terms of revenues exceeding estimates? Well, I, I think it'd be great if revenues exceeded estimates, but there are parts of those revenue estimates that are not as good as we would like, where we're behind. And um, so uh, we can't do that. And, and frankly, we face, uh, we face a couple other issues out there that, uh, that, frankly, I don't want to talk about today, but uh, at some point, if it becomes relevant, uh, I will address it. Do you have an opinion on the House Bill 194 I don't repeal know what it is. Uh, election reform? It's on the ballot in November. No, right now, I, I have to see how things move through. Okay. Thank you all Thanks, very guys. much. Thanks. All right.